Welcome back. We are exploring Gen's office on this island. And uh, in the process, we have figured out not one, but two number systems. I'd call that a productive day. Uh, we haven't quite looked at this yet. Looks like a weird tea kettle made of glass. Oh, it is a weird tea kettle made of glass. Um, more of the weird water behavior we've been seeing. Looks like when the heat's turned on, it all the water went to the top, and now it turned back off, it's coming back down. That's going to make brewing a cup of pretty, uh, pretty complicated. There's also this uh, stack of drawers. Ooh, butterfly. Wait. Yep. It still lights up. <laughs> a little bit anyway. Um, are those the flowers from that tree? Those also, uh, it's hard to tell, honestly. And a piece of a tree. That's what I keep in my drawers. Just a slice of wood. Um, these look like some aquatic animals, maybe? Like shells and bits of coral or something. Not quite sure. And some leaves with notes near them. Seem to be numbers. Dates, I would guess. That's a two, whereas all the other dates we've seen so far have started with a three, so that's a while ago. So that's 50 plus, um, what is that, 14? 64, one, two. And then he wrote something, and I don't know what. Alright, no big secrets in there. I um, guess he was studying the dagger somehow with the magnifying glass. Can't really look through it properly. We can only move it. Um, well, there was a journal here that we haven't quite read. But I think we're ready to do that now. Um, let's see the date here. That's I said this was 34 before. But uh, now we know that it isn't. This would be a 3 and a 4, though, but 3 times 25, 75, plus 4 is 79. So that's 8 years ago, if 87 is the current year. 6 and 12. No, 6 and 7. That's a 5 and a 2, not a, not a 10 and a 2. So, 79, 6, 7. I have been cataloging the natural elements of this age for many years now, yet I still continue to find evidence of the number 5. As a boy, it was very clear to me that it held a place of special significance in the Dunny society. From the ancient heraldic emblems of the ruling elite to the humble homes of the commoners, it was ubiquitous. Its presence here is clearly a direct reflection of the minds that offered the text I used to compose this age, 
further proof that through their art, the Dunny masters were indeed creating the marvelous worlds they wrote, and not, as many have mistakenly thought, merely forging links to pre-existing worlds. While all of my ages have been based on Dunny designs, I see now that the ones most vested with the power of five are also the most beautifully, the most beautiful, the most perfect, and undoubtedly the most structurally sound. Um, that's debatable. I still have yet to determine how the Dunner Dunny color symbology reflects the superior design principle. While ostensibly a six color system, I am convinced that there must be some deeper connection to the number five. I will continue to investigate. Um, that's 81.15. Next date. The Itrim traps have been particularly fruitful this year. Apparently, the breakup of the islands has not adversely affected the sub subterranean ecosystems. Unfortunately, I imagine the rebels are also experiencing a generous harvest. No shortage of poison for their darts this season. Such vexing issues aside, this unexpected windfall has allowed me to refine a particularly present, pleasant extract for my pipe, one that is smoother than any other in recent memory. Um, I guess that might be the frog traps that we've seen? So apparently the frog is called an Itrim, and is the source of both something that Gen smokes, as well as poison for the blow darts, like the one that was used to shoot the guy at the beginning. Um, that's 86.27. I have reluctantly decided to suspend my inquiries into the unusual behavior of the water of this age, as there are more pressing matters that now demand my attention. For future reverence, however, my investigations have revealed the following. I believe the remarkable properties of the water to be caused by a microbe that resides within it. I'm imagining a motile unicellular, unicellular organism, but one with a structure that allows it to manipulate bits of water. The aggregate effect of which is that the composite body of water is able to deform itself in response to threatening conditions. Prolonged exposure to extreme heat, a period of extended boiling for example, seems to kill them off which would explain their dramatic aversion to even moderate rises in temperature. There is still much to learn, however, regarding this particular phenomenon, and its possible uses. I wonder if the water is safe to drink without boiling then, even if it is fresh water. Not sure. 81.5.26 14. Construction of the imagers has proceeded without fault. Remarkable how easy it was to adapt the Dunny technology to mimic that of the Amat. The two cultures must surely have crossed paths at some point in their histories. It may even be that Kita was a direct descendant of the Dunny. How else to explain the re redemptive death of, the, of our connection? But that's all pointless now. See a drawing of the imager we saw in uh, the school. Eighty-two to ten. Maintenance on the steam vent caps completed. I'm extremely pleased with the continued success of the system. Another example of the superiority of Dunny technology. Ironic that Aters and Catherine's meddling unwittingly provided me with such a convenient source of power. I am certain now that the fissure was an unexpected byproduct of the changes they wrote into this age, as part of their machinations to trap me here and that Atrus never intended for the book to be lost among the stars in the process. Better that a linking book to be destroyed, than to risk it falling into an unknown hand. Had they foreseen the creation of the fissure, they surely would have sought another solution, as the ensuing cataclysm may well have consumed the entire world had I not managed to intervene. Catra uh, Catherine would never have knowingly taken such a risk. And surely my son, given his own dearth of vertebrae, had only meant for Riven to become my prison, and not my tomb. 82.5.8 8. 
I am discontinuing regular observations of the expanse beneath the fissure. I have tracked the stars and have proven that their paths are cyclical, but without proper instrumentation there is nothing more I can learn. My theory, however, remains unaltered. The fabric of this age was breached in a way that permits matter to be hospitably exchanged between two discrete yet overlapping spaces. Yet the attendant paradoxes defy the laws of conventional physics. The great column of wind that formed when the rift first appeared suggests a vacuum, as one might expect in space, yet my early experiments seem to confirm the presence of a breathable atmosphere. That Atris momentarily threw himself into the void is further evidence that it might possibly be safe to venture into, but without knowing its true nature, I simply cannot take the risk. It is also difficult to say what would happen were I to reopen the fissure now but it is highly probable that the results would be disastrous. 8271 My hopes have been dashed again. The latest ink formulation has proven to be yet another in a long list of failures. Frustrating to expend so much effort constructing a linking book, only to end up destroying it when it refuses to function. Too often has this lab grown uncomfortably warm by the flames of these never-ending disappointments. Without my reference library back in Dunny, a properly orthodox linking book may simply be beyond my means, but I simply cannot burn another book. There must be another way. 8276. Pens of fate! Late last night, while pondering these interminable setbacks, I went to light my pipe. The fire marble got away from me, however, and rolled across the gateway image of the open book before me. If the consequence of this had not been repeatable, I would not have believed my eyes. As the marble left a faint, yet definite trail of increased clarity in its wake. The change did not last long, but it was unmistakable. If I could find a way to boost the energy output of my fire marbles, it might be possible to suppress the variance enough to facilitate a stable link. But how? 8296 a spatial anomaly occurred yesterday, about five spans above the north shore of Temple Island. A breach of stars, seemingly identical to the one beneath the fissure. It began as a small, clout-like hole, which then commenced to expand in random surges. With some effort, I was finally able to contain it with runic plates, similar to the ones I devised for the fissure. I believe it will hold, but the appearance of a new rift is troubling. And yet... It has also left me with the most uncanny feeling that something fundamental has shifted in my favor. I believe it may be time to give this inexplicable mystery a second look. Um, still 8296. I have erected a small dome, a pressurized airlock, mounted upon the contained breach. This has allowed me to safely conduct tentative forays into the expanse without subjecting Riven to further invasion and the destruction that would certainly attend it. It is a baffling improbable, bafflingly improbable space, yet surprisingly more accommodating than my initial observations had led me to believe. Breathing is indeed possible within it, yet I cannot say that it is respiration as I am used to it. Rather, as nonsensical as this is going to sound, it feels at times as if the Expanse was breathing me, and in the process imbuing me with a sense of endless possibility. 82913 At last, the breakthrough I was hoping for. After my first full day of experiments in the Expanse, I was astonished to discover that the fire marbles in my coat pocket had come to fluoresce. A quick strike test confirmed that their energy levels had increased significantly, and their charge has lasted longer than I would have thought possible. In a clear act of divine providence, the Expanse has given me the final piece of the puzzle, an apparently boundless energy source that should be more than sufficient to rectify my linking books. But I must work quickly. Two more breaches have occurred in the interim each one more aggressive and difficult to contain than the last. Time, I fear, is running out. 8328. The breach is now number five, a sure sign that I am on the right path. 
I have connected the domes of each of them via nexus of pathways within the expanse, which will also serve as an inter-island shortcut as I continue my work on my enhanced fire marble complex. 83-3-3 The loss of two more of my men yesterday has made it clear that the full spectrum of energy is too great for even my finest fire marbles to contain. So, I've decided to break it up into five discrete frequency ranges, which will later be recombined for application to the book. I've installed five charging stations within the expanse, each one calibrated to imbue a blank fire marble with a separate band of the total energy needed. A pneumatic tube system will then convey the charged marbles to the great gold dome on Riven for recombination. Freedom is nearly within my grasp. Uh, we see here some diagrams of the, the big golden dome and the uh, small rotating domes, which we now no, were indeed constructed specifically to allow access into the starry expanse. And then a diagram here, perhaps of the five pipes leading into the domes. These are the Tetris pieces again. Not sure what to make of that. Also again misspelled pneumatic. Mm. Um, 8357. The problem of how to return to Riven has been settled. Reken, I guess that's the name, has proven its usefulness over the years, at times nearly rivaling my own engineering prowess. He and his team will have the honor of being the first to link to the New Age, bringing with them the necessary materials to build a vastly simplified version of the book apparatus, which I have personally designed. If they do not return within a reasonable amount of time, I will revise my design and will send additional men until they get it right. Should they founder, however, I am prepared to sacrifice every last man on Riven to continue the effort. This cannot fail. It's a sacrifice he is willing to make. Eighty-three nine eleven. At long last, a viable loop has been established. After an eternity of toil and sacrifice, and an unconscionable preemption of the ages I might have fathered, I have finally linked to a new age. There's a number here. And it is, in fact, the number 9 and 8. So 9 times 25 plus 8 is 233. This man has written 233 ages. That's a lot. It is a bleak and barren world, perfectly suited for my purposes. By closely comparing the real with the written, I believe I will soon be able to create a more appropriate age from which to relaunch my mission. For now, however, I will move my office and living quarters there so that I may safely continue my endeavors without distraction. And some drawings of things we haven't seen, so I'm assuming this has to do with that new age. Although it is but a stepping stone, 233 is an utter triumph to think that I have accomplished in a matter of years, under extremely adverse conditions, what it took my dunny ancestors centuries to achieve. Yeah, they did it from nothing. You just had to try and remember what you'd already read about. I don't feel that, like that's quite the same uh, kind of accomplishment. 8567. That's quite a jump, we just went ahead two years. I caught one of my assistants thumbing through this journal today. He will certainly never do it again. But I'm glad I chose to write this in a language these people cannot decipher. Perhaps it's time I retrieved security measures with each guildmaster. I reviewed security measures with each guildmaster, sorry. No problem is expected from the builders, maintainers, and surveyors, but the bookmakers and educators may need a bit more motivation. 
86224. More reports of spirit sightings. It seems that under Catherine's leadership, the rebels, or Black Moiety, as the villagers stubbornly insist on referring to them, have attained a new level of sophistication in their terror tactics, renewing their campaign to intimidate the weak-minded into joining them by preying upon their cultural superstitions. I suppose I should be concerned by this, but it strikes me as almost laughable. If the rebels wish to dilute their ranks with dimwits, then who am I to stop them? Interesting, the rebels are doing something to recruit more people. I wonder what. Exactly. Um, 87329, we've moved into the current year. Chemical analysis of one of the rebel knives has yielded curious results. The metal contains elements that are unlike anything I've encountered on the islands. It appears the rebels have access to a resource that I am unaware of. Perhaps a mine? Or an uncharted island? And he, I guess, traced the outline of the knife in his journal. Most of these knives have been found on the south side of the village. The same region that reports of people mysteriously disappearing have emanated from. I think a closer inspection of the area is warranted. The fact that the rebels deliberately leave these distinctive knives as a sign of their presence is concerning. They're growing bolder, as if no long as if they no longer fear discovery of their hideout. 87627. Recent measurements indicate that the movement of the islands has slowed dramatically. My previous estimates predicted a total collapse in approximately three months, but with the new figures I am no longer certain. I have nearly finished writing the 234th H, and have every confidence it will be a safe place to relocate to. But it would still be useful to know what has caused the sudden halt in Riven's breakup. Is it possible that the age is stable after all? If so, I must discover how it differs from 233, which has already shown troubling signs of decay. No further tests are needed, and yet... There's something about this that gives me pause. Could it be that someone is attempting to repair the damage to the Fifth Age at its source? I cannot help but think that the Hand of Atris is behind this somehow. Very interesting reading here. Learned a lot about the domes, about what Gen is doing. Making books, and he's using the domes to power them. So I guess that means that we need to complete what we were doing to power that linking book in the Golden Dome if we want to find Gen. Presumably that linking book goes to the 233rd age, which um, actually it did have a number on the front. It might have been 233. We also see now how he constructed a way back here uh, when he needed to power his linking books and apparently sacrificed a lot of revenues to do so. Nice. If you played the original, you'll have noticed that this uh, journal is quite a bit different than the original. Some things that were in here are no longer in here, and some new information is there. Um, one thing that's different is the dates that before were not written in Dani numbers, but in regular Arabic numerals. And I quite like that because it gives you um, more chances to see numbers, and it gives you something to compare them to, namely the dates in the in Atris's journal. And therefore gives you more opportunities to try and figure out this base 25 system, which you need for the, well, you don't really need the base 25 part, but you do need the symbols up to 24 for the uh, uh, the numbers we saw on the loose piece of paper. Another thing they did when rewriting this, these journals, they have actually all been rewritten. Um, H's journal is basically the same as it was originally, but it had been rewritten because they are all now actually handwritten, which I really like before it was just a cursive font. But these were actually handwritten. 
by people with much, much nicer handwriting than me. Um, there's an actual kettle. Or teapot, anyway. As opposed to the weird glass one here. I guess if you were to turn that on long enough, it would boil away the microbes, as Gen thinks uh, they are. And then uh, you'd be able to drink the water, hopefully. Um, it also sounds like Gen has some problems with rebels. The moiety, as we've already seen, and they are the ones who've been leaving all these uh, knives er, behind. As well as this thing. I wonder if these have something to do with how they are recruiting new people, which they appear to be doing. I'm guessing this is one of the fire marbles. Wait, is the thing... Like These are probably fire marbles too. Which means that the things we see in the starry expanse are also fire marbles. Is that what we were mining? If so, all this equipment is for creating and refining fire marbles. We have uh, a significantly larger chunk of rock here than the final product. We saw some equipment here, something... This like seems like it would fit the larger rock and has some knives around the outside, so... There we go. It breaks open the rock, revealing a smaller stone inside, which I guess is where the fire marbles come from. And um, it looks like there's a trash can here. Let's see, use that to yeah. He uses that to dispose of the outer layer of rock, and that's in fact all those half shells that we saw laying down there. They just get dumped into the water below. Very crude solution, but that seems par for the course. For Gen. We can then take the... Um, smaller rock and presumably put it here to be polished except there's already a stone there which we can't remove so we can't there is also this thing though and it seems to contain maybe some kind of magnet to uh, make the fire marble float in space and we know from other sources that uh, fire marbles are a Dunny thing, not a specifically Rivenese thing. So we can only assume that Gen uh, deliberately wrote the uh, raw source of fire marbles into this age. Can we dispose of the other half? We cannot. Oh well. Um, what's this for then? That does nothing. Seems to have water in it. Um. Oh. It hits it. There's a slider here. And when in doubt in a missed game, we should try adjusting the slider. That 
did something. But there appears to be a curve on here and a green area. And you may recall that the uh, sheet we read here was talking about what is the uh, optimal strike force, which is not necessarily the hardest possible strike. So I guess that using this, we can try to determine that. Let's set it in the middle. We can't put it exactly in the middle, but we can put it at 13, I guess. Um. Oh, now it's lighting up a little bit. It's better. How about over here? Then? Try to do like a binary search. That's worse. So we'll go this way. That's massively back in the other direction, so let's put it in the middle. And I think that's it. Got a lot of light there. Nine. I think the base value is random, but this is now the third time I've gotten nine. So definitely seems to like that one if it is random, or it's not, and I'm just wrong. Um, what's this switch for, though? It douses the fire marble in water. So fire marbles, when agitated, light up. And are indeed the uh, prevalent light source we see all around the place. Presumably there's like a fire marble in here, which we could tell if we could lift this lid at the top, which I think it is. You'd need to have access to it to either strike it or... This lid isn't very close very well, but it's still not really possible to tell. You'd need to be able to strike it and, you know, douse it some way if you want to turn the lights off. We cannot take this fire marble anymore, but we have our base value, which is nice. Which presumably we have to combine at some point with these values. I, I don't think I took a picture of these, so let's make sure I did. To turn fire marbles into power marbles, which is part of that process to fix the linking books that Gen was talking about. Quite a fortuitous series of events that he discovered that and then gained access to the Starry Expanse to power up the fire marbles. Fortuitous for him, but not so much for uh, for Atris and us, because if things would be a lot simpler if Gen was still here for, to capture him, and it also means that the prison is no longer effective. Uh, this building actually has two doors. We haven't opened this one yet. It's a back entrance that seems to lead to a maglev going to the weird-looking island. Oh, here we can see the the minecart track. Just go diving into a hole into the water over there. However, before we go there, there's still some stuff here that I want to investigate because we haven't really been out on this walkway yet. I suppose that um, this is the furnace which Gen used to uh, burn his failed books. He did refer to it being uncomfortably warm in his office, but when uh, either 
after he stopped burning books because he didn't want to anymore or after he uh, got them working he stopped burning them threw out the uh, the furnace and built this fire marble polisher thing instead oh by the way if you do want that look at it uh, for a 15 minutes achievement I think you have to keep it moving the whole time Do I have the brake on or something? Oh, oh no, there we go. Well, we know why it was starting. But yeah, you do have to keep it moving, so... You can't just quite, uh... walk away either. To occasionally collect the lever to make sure it stays moving. Not what we're gonna do right now. Of course, in the original, the furnace was still in the, uh office. Well, you can tell he threw it over the railing here because the railing has a dent in it. Disposing of things properly is not one of uh, Gen's strong suits, it seems. Um, what's this way? We have not gone this way yet. Goes through a cave. A very dark cave. Not very long, fortunately. To... Oh. The bridge that... Uh, definitely was already destroyed when before we arrived in Riven. Yeah, that's the bridge back to... Uh, Temple Island. Which uh, is no longer in service. Of course, you don't have to switch the steam valve. You can, in fact, get here with the bridge still intact, which means you can walk across it, which takes like 30 seconds. Um, and then you get to a closed or open bridge, which you can't cross anyway. You need the steam valve to lower it, and you um, can't turn the steam valve because it destroys the bridge. I think this may be a bit of an in-joke, because uh, there was a blog from the Starry Expanse uh, original fan project to remake Riven, where they were kind of worried about what to do with this bridge, because yeah, it is much longer than it appears in the uh, original game. In the original game, you can just click through the slideshow to get to the other end in, like, a second. Whereas in a real-time 3D game, you have to walk across it, and like I said, it takes quite a while. Which is awkward to do. So I guess Cyan's solution to that problem was just... Don't have the bridge! Blow it up! Not that it really made things better, because all of the alternative ways you have to get back to Temple Island actually take longer than it would have to cross the bridge. But then again, you don't really need to cross this bridge anymore either with some of the other changes they made. In the original game, it was vital that you entered the Golden Dome from this direction, and it is no longer the case. Uh, we can continue down this way, which we also didn't do before. And these paths also take quite a while to walk across. Of course, I could be running, but... I don't want to run. I want to enjoy the view. And the gorgeous graphics of this remake. Um, wait, what? Must be pressure activated or something. Isn't this... Yeah, this is towards the fire marble cave. And we're outside here. Okay, this passage was hidden behind the closed door. Clever. Of course, we know that was the case in the original, and it was something uh, 
that probably got more than a few people stuck. And in the original, you had to find this passage because you had to go there to be able to get into Gen's lab through here, which worked quite a bit differently. Whereas now, you can get into Gen's lab anyway and then find it that way, so they're a little bit uh, kinder with that puzzle now. And doing that also reveals a passage on the other side, which we actually already saw before. You can see it through here. Another hint that you might want to take a second look at this door. Uh, we should be able to look into the cave then from here. Yes, we can. It's another door. Hey, we found the rotating dome, which we now know was actually a place where the starry expanse breached into the real world, similar to what we saw happening in um, uh, on the jungle island. Hopefully someone goes and contains that one before it destroys Riven before we can uh, complete our mission. Seems like it's very windy for some reason. There's smoke rising from here. I can't really tell. No, it does seem to be coming from the cave and not from the enclosure. Again, refer to these as runic plates, so I guess these are the runes he's talking about, because this is just regular um, writing, like dunny writing, like we've seen elsewhere. This is not. In fact, I think uh, Cyan confirmed this to be, um, I think it's called a Garohev, one of the special symbols that describe concepts used to write linking books and descriptive books. First time we've ever seen one, I do believe. And we see the uh, pneumatic tube delivering the charged up fire marble to the uh, Golden Dome. Well, if there is a rotating dome here, there should be a viewer nearby. I don't quite see it yet. Oh, here the light. We can actually see these lights are on. So I guess it would be a little dark in here. Oh, okay, can't actually walk all the way around because of this pipe. Oh, no, okay. I can squeeze through. Oh, um, that's the viewer, I guess. There it is. How do I get there? Not from in here. Wait, this is another curved door like upstairs. Knew it! Yeah, once you've found the first passage, this one is a little bit easier to uh, deduce the existence of. The wind through this cave sounds very haunting. And there we have the viewer. We need to know the symbol for this island, though. So let's take a look at our notebook. Um, well, this one is pretty clearly facing the uh, crater. There's Gen's office that we were just in. So this has to be the symbol, just a vertical line. And got it in one. It just came up as I looked at it. As before, 
the dome stops. Which actually matches up the symbol with the flipped up glass, and then it opens. Thus giving us our third way into the starry expanse. But we will check that out in the next video.